G'day Internet and welcome to River City Ransom Underground Underground. My name is Andrew Russell. I'm the lead programmer on River City Ransom Underground and in this series I talk to you about some of the technical features in the River City Ransom Underground engine. Now, um, today let's have a little look at what we were talking about. Um, last episode we talked about how we made sort of nice, where's my navigator gone? Here he is. Nice paths through this um, navigation map that made sure that we're not sticking um, these ugly elbows all the way through the um, the sector edges. Um, you know, we want to make nice paths that sort of follow <coughs> the way a human would um, path through the level and account for the fact that, you know, our, our movement scheme is, say, unlike a first person shooter, you know, um, we have this we have this situation here where we've got eight way movement rather than sort of infinite, you know, as many ways as you like. Um, so let's talk about the next thing. Have I gone and drawn over here? I have. Here we go. Okay. So that's everything we talked about last week, and you know, hopefully you've enjoyed that episode. So this week we're going to talk about uh, one other challenging thing um, about finding paths through the level, and this one is maybe maybe a bit more straightforward to explain, but it was sort of tricky to program I guess. So one of the things about um, pathfinding, let's go to uh, the visual test and bring up this fellow. So this is, you know, this is the initial prototype of the pathfinding and um, you know, here's a path and I'll just print screen that and put it into paint or into the GIMP and let's have a little look. So <clears throat> one of the important things about the A-star algorithm is that you need to make accurate estimates about the distance between um, points that you're pathfinding between. So <clears throat> one of the difficulties with that is how do we how do we figure out the distance between two edges? So <clears throat> And what that means is, you know, this, this just, maybe I should uh, scale this up so I can draw on it with, yeah, let's do that. Um, scale image by, um, say 500%. That is a lot of memory. That's cool. So, you know, we want to find the distance between two edges because we can then say you know this path we want to be able to approximate how long this path is the one that goes through you know this edge and 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 so on as opposed to say a path that might come through say here so so say we have a path that goes around here to get to the goal because the point is we need to be able to determine this this say is like um, say this is 1000 units long in fact I can actually go up here and read it uh, 1207 so this because I've got actual data 1207 units of um, distance to get to the goal down in this corner here behind my head so uh, to get down to there whereas this one you know this one that I've scribbled in if I wanted to get to that goal you know this might be say we'll go around there we'll probably say it might be 1507 why not so obviously that path is much longer than that path and the thing we need to do to determine whether one path is better than another as we go through and find a path is we have to make that comparison we have to know how long the path is so we you know we need a distance from there to this edge and we need a distance from here to this edge and um, once we get to say this edge we need a distance from there to there now um, that's all well and good and let me show you a little um, here we go. This is the thing that we do this test with. So this is the prototype, prototyping um, 
visual test that, that I used when I was uh, developing this. And I think uh, the red one is the start point. And yeah, and you see uh, weighted distance 140. And what this does is it says, you know, we're starting at this point here. What's the close, say we, say we have an edge here, what are the closest points on this edge um, to get to? Uh, we can get, um, let's take another screenshot of that and scribble on it because, uh, you know, this is working well. So we have our guy and he's standing here. Now, you remember in the last episode, I talked about how if we were a first person shooter, you know, we'd have directions like this. We'd move here and we get out to an edge in any direction. Whereas in the case of River City Ransom Underground, you know, we've got eight way movement. And the upshot of this is that to get from say here to here, it's just a straight line. So, you know, we can calculate the length of a straight line fairly easy. That might be say 100 doesn't really matter. Whereas, um, I might draw this one a bit more properly. If we have a path to walk here, you know, we need to go across a bit first before we go down to the target. And that might have a distance, say, that might be 100, let's say, 100. But what's very interesting here is, say, we could draw another path here that goes like this. Let's, let's draw it a little bit more carefully. You know, we could draw a path like this. And that would also be 100 because you'll notice that if we move diagonally, we still get all of the speed on the x-axis. X -axis. So what this means is that rather than um, doing the formula for length, which is uh, square root of x squared plus y squared is length. You know, this length is um, the maximum of x and y. So, you know, if x happens to be longer, we have all of this time here, we could just, if we were so inclined, we could stick as much y movement in there as possible and it wouldn't affect the length, it wouldn't affect the distance because this way here, you know, from there to there is the maximum. We could also have that in the other direction, you know, say we have a path like that, you know, is um, possible like a path that this is the same length and they're both, you know, 100 or whatever, because the distance on the y-axis is the longest one. That's much longer than you know the distance on the x-axis. You know, so in this case, x is less than y, and in this case, x is greater than y. So in this case, we choose x, and in this case, we choose y. Um, so that tells us our distance between, um, you know. That's, that tells us the distance of a path that we might come up with. And so what we're doing here is if we had a first person shooter, in this case, you know, we would just say that this distance is always going to be shorter than this distance here. Whereas in our case here, where we have this eight way control scheme, you know, this distance here, is exactly the same distance as this distance here. That might come, you know, up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, and the reason is, you know, we don't actually care about the distance. We actually care about how the time taken. So it's really the time. So the amount of time to get to there is, you know, according to this, and this is weighted, so it's actually not exact. But we'll say that this is 164 units of time to reach that point. So that is how we figure out, you know, in the simple case, how long it takes to get from there to there versus how long it takes to get from, you know, here to there. Whoops. 
um, and so on. So let's say, you know, I've kind of flipped that diagram. Let's say we've gone from here to here. Now you can probably start to guess why these lines are drawn. Let's sort of scribble over it. This line here is drawn on this edge and that's because that is the region that we can reach in the smallest amount of time. So if we were to try going this direction, you know, it would end up being, we would highlight a region on this edge there. So that is the region on that edge that we can reach in the shortest amount of time because it's, you know, it's a range of points are available to us because in theory, even though we don't do it, we could, um, it's not going to show up very well in the pink background, you know, we could go up and down and up and down and up and down until we get there. As long as we're always driving on the maximum axis, the max axis for maximum length, the x axis, you know, it doesn't matter what our y input is, it could be up, it could be down, it could be nothing. Um, as long as x is always pushing that way. So, <clears throat> um, so we've figured out that that's how many units to get to there. And what ends up happening is we've got this range here of places we could, in theory, be on this axis. And this becomes important based on what we were talking about before, because uh, if we recall what I drew last time, uh, it's entirely possible that the um, you know the area that we're going to on this thing, you know, oops, might be clipped. So it might look like we can go from, or we can reach this section in the minimum amount of time, but we may actually be having to go towards this section here. So anyway, um, what this looks like is, you know, so, so I should say, um, you know, obviously, the distance to here is, you know, different to the distance to here. But to get to here, we actually have to do this look ahead process. We have to look ahead to here, then look ahead to here, and look ahead to here to, to clip this down. But when we're doing the pathfinder, we don't have that data. We don't know where we're going to go in the future to do that clipping. But we do know we're going to go to here. And the thing about um, a star is that it relies on a heuristic. Um, distance estimate. I'm just trying to think exactly. Yes. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have to hand wave some of this because it's just complicated, but suffice to say that we only need an, an estimated, estimated distance to make this work. And so the way we get this estimated distance is we go from here, and then we say, so we're, we're here and we want to know where we can go from any of the points along here in the shortest distance possible. So we need not only just an estimated distance, but the minimum estimated distance. So we have to say it takes at least this amount of time. So this is the shortest amount of time it can take. It can, we, can, we might end up having to pass through this and it will take longer, but any place we go along this line is always going to be a shorter distance than it takes to get to any point on this highlighted section. So obviously you can see it's a sort of finicky thing to sort of reason about. But anyway, <clears throat> so we're, we're here or let's say, you know, we're here. We've, we've, path, we've done a path find to this point here. Let's go back to our interactive test. What ends up happening is our starting point then becomes this section here. So that's the starting point is there. And then the next section might be up here. And so what happens is when you come back to here, is then we go and, go and highlight the next edge. So we're doing the pathfinder round and we, you know, it projects out this way and it says, that is the shortest sort of, the closest reachable section of this path. So this is the minimum amount of time it will take to get to there. Uh, so this is the region we can reach if you give us the minimum amount of time possible. So that's all well and good. And, you know, you might ask, why do we need, why do we need all this information? I mean, the distance from 
here to here is very easy to calculate. You know, the distance from that edge to that edge, it's just this, um, it's just this fixed amount. We could, we could just store it as a constant. But we have the situation we might have that happens down. Let me make sure it's not behind my head. It happens down here, and you recall. I think I'm. I must have mentioned this earlier. Hopefully, in this episode, not the last one. You know, we have this situation here. Where we've got this one pixel here because we know that we're coming down. What's the shortest distance from this edge here to this edge here? It's always going to be here. So let me just explain that. So here's the interactive demo again. We have, there's one edge and there's another edge. You'll notice that the shortest uh, way to get from here to there is highlighted in green. So every path from this red section, the shortest way, in fact, is it every path? Yeah, so any point on this red section, the shortest way to get to the blue edge is to go directly to this point here. Um, now this presents a bit of a challenge, um, which is why we why we do this process at all. And that is, um, you'll notice if I have say two edges that meet like that, the distance between them is zero. So just to just to really clarify that, let's. Um, paste a copy of it into the drawing thing. So the distance to get, you know, from this edge to this edge, just to count the entire edge itself, is zero. But we might have um, come from another path up here that clips down and means that we're at this point here on this edge. Which means that there's no way that we can get to this edge in zero. Um, you know, the minimum time we need to get from here, well, sorry, we've just come from here, the minimum time to get from this subset of this edge is actually going to be whatever the time it takes to get to here. And so you'll see if I um, now do this in the interactive tool. Um, yeah, if I clip this down, ah, the distance is actually to get to there, uh, not down there like that. Why is that the case? Ah, because this is too close. Is it? Oh, I just botched an explanation. Hmm. Weird. Okay. That's embarrassing. I predicted something and I was wrong. This is what I get for not testing this out before the episode. So, but we got to trust. We got to trust the. Um, got to trust the algorithm is correct. It's giving us the minimum distance from any point on this line is to go straight to here, which I guess is correct because, you know, if we go down here, we actually have to travel. Um, we have to travel somewhat. Oh, no, my, my mistake. I understand what, so I've, I haven't done the clipping. The clipping, um, you know, I clipped the red one, but I didn't clip the blue one because the pathfinding will come through and say, well, here is an edge that I can get to from here. It will go through and clip on, it will clip to this edge here and say, you know, this is where this clips to. Is that right? No, it's not. <laughs> it will actually, in fact, say. It will, in fact, say that the closest point is there. Maybe I've just drawn this diagram poorly. Let me try again. Let me try again. That's embarrassing. This is for a sort of major. Major time I've confused myself on a show, but we're going to press on. 
let's try this again. So we're here, and now let's draw this accurately. We've just come from an edge here. So that's going to clip this red edge down. Ah, yes, okay, yeah. I confused myself, that's no good. So it's not going to say there, it's actually going to say there. Because obviously that is in fact the shortest distance to go from any point here on this line, the shortest way to get there is to go um, from this point here straight across here. So remember that we're still going for the minimum distance, the minimum um, the minimum estimated distance to get from here to here. So the minimum is obviously from this point here to any point along here. So, you know, and then I shrink this down and what do you know, we can reach anywhere there in the minimum amount of time. Okay, I'm glad we, <laughs> I'm glad we resolved that. So we also get the situation where say, you know, we have this situation here, we might have, um, you know, if, if, these are, if these are out of alignment and he actually has to move across a bit, that's always gonna be the minimum point to go to. Whereas if I do that, if the edge is sort of in this um, section where he can uh, get to it by going down some amount, um, you know, this is the minimum section we can get to. So the point of all that is we need to get the minimum estimated distance. What happens, the reason we have to do all this clipping is if we have a situation where we're estimating zero in this corner, if we're not doing any clipping, we get a level like uh, this one. We have sections here and, um, you know, the path will say, well, to get from this edge here, I won't highlight the whole edge. I'll, in fact, I will just draw an arrow to get from this edge here to this edge here, we haven't clipped it at all, the distance is going to be there to there. Then the distance to get from this edge here, this, uh, let's draw this more clearly, this, this edge here, so that's going to be, you know, we'll say that's four. The distance to get from this edge here to this edge here is zero, because we're on this corner here. And the distance to get from this edge here to this edge here is zero because we're going through this corner. And the distance from here to here is also zero. So what happens is say, you know, you know, it's trying to find the minimum path. It will say, oh, look, to get from here, and I say I'm somewhere around here, what I need to do is I need to get onto you know, I'm here, I need to get onto this edge as quickly as possible, I need to get up there. I need to travel along here, and I need to hit edge, this edge all the way down until I get to this corner, and then I need to hit this edge, I need to hit this edge and say our target's here. And then I go to the target. So what happens is you get, again, like I was saying in the um, previous episode, you get paths that, you know, get, to the, get you to the goal, but they have these awful, ugly, um, you know, elbows in them, so a different kind of elbow to these ones we discussed uh, you know, in this episode here, but an elbow nonetheless because they try and skirt around areas that um, you know have these like L or you know there's a T intersection there um, or we like this L intersection there and so they had you know they make a beeline for that and what makes that particularly bad in game is that um, you know it makes it really obvious where our edges are, and we kind of we kind of want to present the illusion that it's just a continuous level. There's no um, sector map or anything like that. We just want it to look like there's a human player making sensible paths through the level. So we have to make absolutely sure that you know these uh, these edge edge distances don't go down to zero, and um, you know, 
to layer on some confusion, I don't think I'll go into this in too much detail, but you'll notice that you know, this says weighted distance um, here. And the reason for that is we actually do slight weighting. So um, I think, uh, yeah, this shows it best. So you'll notice that the distance is from here. In fact, I will print screen this and I will draw on it. Um, you know, the distance from here to here is 112 to get to there. But you'll notice as soon as I clip this off, if I, if I clip it here, if I delete the rest of this line, it's going to say that this is more than 112 or whatever it is, because it actually does slightly take into account the fact that this goes diagonally like that. And the reason for that is, um, I'll just show you real quick. So, you know, if I take this line, I go up, you know, this is 112, but if I start to go below this, you know, this uh, horizontal line here, you know, we start at 112 and we start to gradually creep up. And the reason for this is tie breaking um, because what ends up happening. So another complicated thing that ends up happening in, um, I was already in there, uh, here we go is that you know you can end up in situations where two edges have basically the same cost um i can't think of a really good example of that right now i think that's probably too complicated to explain um particularly because i haven't prepared it but basically yeah so i think this is a case i think this is a case where you know the distance to get to this edge is the same as the distance to get to this edge um, here. And obviously we want to go to this edge because it gives us this nice path there, whereas we'd rather not have to go through this edge and add another corner to the path to get to the... Um, you'll notice that it actually clicks up to there. Um, I think I think that's the case. This is not something I you know I didn't go back to the code to look this up before the show because you know as as I have said um, I think in the past you know it has been quite a while since I actually wrote the pathfinding code so it's like a whole lot of stuff I've forgotten about it. But basically yeah so by giving it a tiny little bit of weighting towards favoring um, a direct path in um, you know cases where there's sort of two options to go for. It just makes nicer paths. And, you know, we have spent a lot of time going through, or at least I've spent a lot of time going through, making sure that the paths that we get, you know, are at least sensible, if not, you know, look like a human's path. So anyway, you know, that's that's the complicated, complicated um, stuff that we have to deal with to get pathfinding working in River City Ransom Underground, as usual. If you go to my website at andrewrussell.net, you can get these, uh, you know, you'll get an RSS feed or whatever. Um, as soon as these videos are put online, uh, I'll also post them to my Twitter at underscore Andrew Russell. Um, and, you know, if you subscribe to me on YouTube, you can also get a notification when they come up on YouTube. If you'd like to follow the game, you can follow the game at River City Ransom on uh, Twitter or on Facebook at River City Ransom Game. So go and check those out. And thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.